वेलकम टू महात्मा एजुकेशन सोसाइटीज ई लर्निंग चैनल दिस इज द नाइन्थ ऑफ अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू मैकेनिकल वाइब्रेशंस वी आर इन द चैप्टर फ्री एंड डैम्ड सिंगल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम वाइब्रेशन सिस्टम्स द आउटलाइन ऑफ द लेक्चर द रिकेपिटलेशन ऑफ कंटेंट्स कवर्ड इन द लास्ट लेक्चर द जनरल सोल्यूशन फॉर्म्स ऑफ डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन एंड द रिक्वेलेंस फॉर अ स्प्रिंग मा सिस्टम and we end with approximations for sinusoidal terms that is sine and cosine terms the recap we have seen the methods for formulation of differential equation and the to get the value of omega n the first of this is the newton's equilibrium method where we state that inertia force is equal to summation of remaining forces in direction of motion we have to remember that wherever we show the displacement in the fbd there we show x dot and x double dot okay and multiply x double dot with m we get the inertia force likewise d albert's principle states that summation of inertia force plus all the forces equal to 0 so both are equivalent then follows the energy methods we have summation of ke and pe which is total energy for a conservative system which remains same for any given time t so the time derivative is equal to 0 so we get from this the differential equation that is mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0 dividing by m throughout i am having x double dot plus k by mx equal to 0 and i get the value of omega n square relays method we compare the energies at two positions one is at equilibrium position one is the extreme position and because the total energy remains same and there is only presence of single energy other one is zero we have maximum ke is equal to maximum pe and from this i get the value of ke is equal to m omega square or basically omega n is equal to root of k upon m in the equivalent system method we say that a system is uh, composed of the simplest uh, configuration that is only one spring and only one mass for transitory system and only one torsional spring or shaft and only one rotor in case of angular coordinate right so i find here what is ke and what is pe of the real system and i write in the following forms half into something of x dot square or half into something of x square for a pe and this something within the brackets will be compared with the equivalent system and i say this is m equivalent and it is k equivalent right and by getting the k equivalent m equivalent i can find what is omega n k equivalent by m equivalent the lagrangian method is the most powerful of all the methods available it is meant for conservative or non conservative systems free vibration force vibration single degree multi degree systems right so for our case we use the formula d by dt partial of lagrangian operator with respect to velocity minus partial with respect to displacement equal to 0 where lagrangian is given by difference between kinetic and potential energy now the general solution forms of differential equation and their equivalence for a spring mass system so we have seen in the last lecture of chapter number 1 the three expressions of the solution that is a into sin of omega nt plus phi so this is the generalized formula right so we get any value of the phase difference from this one if we write simply a sin of omega t then it corresponds to one specialized case of initial conditions so this is more general so i'm having a different form as a cos of omega nt plus phi or i can have one more form that is a sin of omega nt and b cos of omega nt so here there is no expression for the phase difference as such but all these three are equivalent and we'll see how so let us take the first of these x of t is equal to a sin of omega nt 
plus 5. When we expand this equation, I am having sin of omega n t cos of phi plus a cos of omega n t sin of phi. So, if I combine this a and cos phi, I get let us say another constant a dash a dash sin of omega n t and if I combine a and sin phi, I get let us say b dash cos of omega n t right and this form is exactly the same as that of the third equation, where in the third equation a is replaced by a dash and b is replaced by b dash. Okay. So, equations 1 and 3 are equivalent. The values of the a and phi of the first form and the values of this uh, a dash and b dash of the third form are different, right. But for a given time t, the value of displacement or the position of mass remains same. Likewise, I can go with the second equation a cos of omega n t plus phi. So, expanding this cos a plus b cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So, cos a cos b minus sin a sin b right. So, again you are having a cos phi as another constant and minus a sin phi as some other constant. So, let us call this minus a sin phi as a dash in this case and sin of omega n t plus a into cos phi as b dash into cos of omega n t. So, again I am having this form as the equivalent to the third form right. So, I can say now that equations 2 and equations 3 are equivalent. So, because 1 and 3 are equivalent and 2 and 3 are equivalent, so I am having equivalence of equivalence of 1 and 2 also right equivalence of 1 and 2 also. So, you can use any, any of the 3 equations and for a given time t you can find the value of the position of the mass. Now, approximations for sinusoidal terms. So, sinusoidal in the sense that I am talking about sin term and cosine term. So, wherever in the differential equation for the real physical system you come across this sin and cosine terms, then you replace this by uh, corresponding terms involving the basic coordinate or generalized coordinate either x or theta. Why do we do this? So, these sin and cosine terms are nonlinear in nature and we get a nonlinear differential equation. To solve these nonlinear differential equation, the methods available are different than the methods for solving the linear differential equation and they are difficult if not impossible to solve. Right? So, as engineers we always try to simplify the given problem and we convert this non-linear parameters in terms of a equivalent linear parameters. Why? Because it becomes easy for us to solve. Right? Now, if we refer to the Taylor's expansion series, I can write sin of theta as theta minus theta raised to 3 by 3 factorial plus theta raised to 5 by 5 factorial minus theta raised to 7 by sin factorial and the list goes on right and the expansion for cos of theta is 1 minus theta square by 2 factorial which is basically 2 plus theta raised to 4 by 4 factorial minus theta raised to 6 by 6 factorial likewise and it goes on. Now, if the number of terms in the series is going to infinite, this number goes to infinity right number of terms, then I get a x z equal to. Okay. So, it is equal to sin of theta and over here it is exactly equal to cos of theta if number of terms becomes infinite and these are non-linear now. So, to convert that into linear form, what we do is in the simplest sense, I will try to retain this number of 
uh, or the number of terms involving the coordinate. So, in the first case, I am having theta and you are having the other higher order terms, you expel it. So, assume that it is 0, right. In the case of cos of theta, I will retain the terms having theta as the basic coordinate and I will try to remove all these parameters from consideration. So, basically what I am trying to do is approximating sin with theta only and wherever cos theta comes, I will approximate that with 1 minus theta square by 2. So, when is this valid? When does, when does this uh, approximation sign become e equal to sign, right? So, this happens when theta is very, very small, right? So, if theta is 0, then I am having sign of 0, both are same. Likewise, for cos of theta, if I am talking about theta is 0, then this is equal to 1. So, cos of 0 will be equal to 1. So, this approximation becomes equal to equal to sign, right? So, theta has to be very small value. So, to conclude here, I can say that to convert a non-linear problem having sinusoidal terms in terms of a equivalent linear problem, I should replace this sin and cosine theta having minimum number of independent coordinates, right, independent terms, right. So, that is theta and 1 minus theta square by 2 and I should assume that the approximation will be converted to equality only when there is a very less value of theta, right. So, for all the problems, for all the numericals, I will assume implicitly that the deformations involved or the displacements involved are very, very small. It is implicitly understood, right. So, what we have seen in this uh, lecture is the uh, equivalence of uh, the three different forms of solution to the differential equation, right. So, we have seen the expansion and we have seen how one form is equivalent to another form and uh, uh, we have also seen the approximations for sin and cosine theta, right. Why we are doing that? Because we want to convert this non-linear problem in terms of a equivalent linear problem which will be easy for us to solve, right. And that happens when the displacements are assumed to be very small, right. So, I hope you understood the contents. Thank you.